Ying and I'm your host on Inside Vietnam. This is a fantastic market because of the strength of the population. A very high level of attractiveness. It makes sense for them to look at Vietnam. Stabilised, there is an opportunity in Vietnam because it is emerging, an emerging market. You know, there's still a huge amount of foreign investment coming in here. There's still a huge amount of interest in Vietnam. Hello everyone and welcome back to the show. My name is Phim Wing and I'm your host on Inside Vietnam. As we develop the show, we will start introducing panel discussion and hence a different setup that you see today. Now let's get back to the show. Vietnam has been the world's most impressive growth stories over the last two decades. The key driver, according to Vietnam Competitiveness Review 2010, has been improved labor productivity. However, despite the recent gains, Vietnam still remains behind many other countries in infrastructure development supply chain maturity, and national business policy framework. I have a panel here today to discuss the address supply chain issues facing Vietnam. Let me introduce Mr. Akkad Dutz, GD of Patrick Wood Vietnam and co-founder of the Vietnam Supply Chain Organization, and Mr. Ng Nguyen, Supply Chain Deputy Director of Hong Sin Vietnam. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your participation in the show today. Um, probably the first question I would ask um, is something that is of um, media presence at the moment, um, the China alternative um, and whether Vietnam should be one. What is your personal point of view on this? I mean, uh, China has been really the big success stories over the last um, 10 years. I mean, we can see that um, at the moment already six out of the G20 states are already the biggest uh, trading partner of China. Mm -hmm. And if you just look into the share of the world trade, it increased from 2% up to 10%, that is an increase of 500%. And uh, in that context, we have to see the role of Vietnam. Mm -hmm. uh, many um, companies um, follow a strategy which we can call China plus one. Mm -hmm. And obviously, Vietnam is always one which is considered to be very uh, prominent. I will certainly agree with that idea, because I think um, we have quite um, a big advantage of our labor cost. Mm -hmm. Um, as in some areas like um, back, uh, the area which is uh, sharing the border with China, like Bacnin for example, mm -hmm. where we have uh, quite a connection of uh, um, road transportation to some um, industrial areas mm -hmm. and where we have quite um, a low cost of labor mm -hmm. and um, this is certainly our advantage uh, for the time being. You mentioned labor cost as an yeah. advantage of Vietnam. How cheap is labor cost in Vietnam compared to China and neighboring countries as an advantage? I mean, what we see in China is that the economy has uh, developed at very high growth figures and so mm. did the, the salary cost. At the moment, we can see uh, the salary cost in, in China almost double as high as in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, next to that, we also have a labor shortage. That is why for Vietnam, there's an opportunity to benefit from that development. Mm. Uh, but to answer your, 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 your question, um, Vietnam still has a labor cost advantage and it's, it's about similar like um, countries like Indonesia. Mm. Uh, we are talking about a thousand to one thousand two hundred dollars per year mm. uh, for labor, whereas China is more than two thousand dollars already. Mm -hmm. What about Vietnam? Vietnam is uh, 1,200, uh, has uh, uh, also increasing or has increased uh, quite strongly over the last uh, few years. Um, but uh, the gap is opening up because uh, labor increases in China are even higher than Vietnam. And you mentioned that the cheap labor cost that Vietnam has advantage on at the moment is just for the moment. What do you mean by that? Vietnam is still in the early stage of development mm -hmm. where we have clear advantage of labor cost. And of course, we should take advantage of that. Um, and of course, along the way, we have to organize ourselves to to be more value added. But labor cost is certainly uh, not the only factor that was uh, that, that would probably influence the supply chain, um, especially for a country like Vietnam. There are other factors like productivity or wastage or efficiency of the logistics sure. network. So if we add all of those together and have an all-in cost structure, is Vietnam still cheaper 
than China and other neighboring countries in Asia. Maybe to, to add on the, uh, the labor cost development, it is definitely impacted by the demographics of Vietnam and mm. that's where we can already foresee for the next uh, 10 or 20 years that that uh, benefit eventually will decrease. If you look into the total um, picture, that's indeed important because we need to see the labor costs in relation to the productivity and uh, also in, uh, in terms of the capital. Uh, and that's where you see the difference between Vietnam and China. China has already um, a much larger capital base and as a result obviously can uh, um, have a more product, uh, productive uh, factory and, and, and setups compared to Vietnam. So there's definitely a benefit uh, of China on that end. Mm. If you look into, uh, in, into quality and um, uh, waste levels, I would see that uh, the situation is not so much different. Thirdly, on the logistic uh, uh, costs and transportation and all of that, I would see a benefit of China because they, they have uh, made major investments in infrastructure. So if you look into the, the transportation costs from China to the main markets in Europe and US, you would expect them to be a little bit lower than um, uh, Vietnam. So if you sum it all up, I think there is still a, a good opportunity for Vietnam to, to have lower cost, but uh, they are partly offset uh, through uh, less capital and, 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 and the infrastructure, which is not as good in China. Mm. Is that what you say with your company operation as well? From the field where I am operating in, mm. uh, new ports are being built and uh, ports are being upgraded to mm. a higher level of, of technology. Mm -hmm. We are in the period of developing these facilities. Mm. Of course, there's a lot of problem, but we can see a positive trend of, of, of Vietnam uh, in this term. So you're saying that the 10% of GDP investment that the government has put into infrastructure has actually influenced um, the performance of supply chain in Vietnam in a positive way. I agree with that uh, comment. And uh, where I up, uh, operate in, um, and it impacts a lot on our operation, uh, there are more bridges connect uh, provinces, mm. and uh, there are more interprovincial interprovincial connection between um, provinces mm. uh, are being set up. So this uh, shortens a lot of uh, distance mm. in terms of transportation between province province and province, uh, and this helps a lot reducing the transportation cost. Mm. Well, that's a positive comment. Um, there's definitely a lot of good uh, plans, but what probably is missing is an integration of um, the different uh, investments across uh, um, areas like um, the land use, mm. um, the seaports, um, the railway. All of these have to be integrated to really serve the supply chain. And if you just look into the uh, um, structure, decision structure of the government, we will see that these decisions are fragmented and as a result we don't necessarily have that integrated master plan. I can see that as a challenge for Vietnam supply chain at the moment, but let's get into the nuts and bolts of supply mm. chain network in Vietnam and let's talk about each individual factor, yes. the challenges as well as how you would respond to those challenges um, as companies working here in Vietnam. Let's start with with my um, reading of the Provincial Competitiveness Index and it says that 71% of companies report that their goods are being damaged by the poor quality of road in Vietnam, costing them about 43 million Vietnam dong per firm per annum. Mm -hmm. What is your impression towards this figure? My comment would be um, road infrastructure uh, needs to be upgraded, does it impact the overall profitability uh, and the situation of the company? I would say it has a very limited impact if you look into more sectors. But maybe Mr. Ian can share from his uh, experience. Um, yeah, I think the, the current road condition is, um, is much better compared to that of 10 years ago for sure. Uh, a lot of projects um, are being developed. Uh, like the uh, uh, north south highway, mm -hmm. uh, the 51 uh, highway mm -hmm. that connect Ho that connects Ho Chi Minh City and Vuong Tau is being uh, developed, mm -hmm. um, and some other interprovincial uh, road connections also are being developed. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, it, it impacts uh, positively on our transportation, but uh, of course, the demand is uh, is such at a higher level. It, it needs to be quicker. What about the railway system? Does that help? 
railway definitely a big potential, but it would require major investment to really upgrade that uh, to to a level that it, it serves the 2,000 kilometer length in a way that uh, maybe the transportation time could be cut back from maybe uh, 50 hours all the way down maybe to 20 or 24. Yeah. But I would add some more points into your um, comment, Eckhart, that um, currently um, myself, I don't see any project or plans from the government to connect the railway to the port. Yes. The, the integration between railway and, and roadway, for example, mm. or, or ports and railway, uh, railway, roadway. You mentioned um, the coastline, yes. so connectivity at the coastline. So um, what are, what's happening to the seaports in Vietnam? Do we, how many seaports do we have? And is it actually meeting the growing demand of imports and exports in Vietnam? On, on the one hand, uh, we, we have uh, uh, many seaports in Vietnam due to the, um, the coastal situation. So mm. I would never expect any uh, overall uh, shortage uh, because we have access to, to, to really many, many ports. Recently, we have seen the development of the first deep uh, seawater port in, in, in uh, um, uh, Kai Map, and that is definitely necessary so that we can connect uh, Vietnam also um, with direct calling from Vietnam to the US and to Europe because what is very important nowadays in uh, logistics is the lead time. Mm -hmm. So the moment that we have direct calling to those major um, customer countries, we can shorten the lead time by maybe as much as one week. And that is definitely an important development for Vietnam. Sure, definitely. And I, th I think there are currently a lot of uh, sea uh, deep water ports are being built in the uh, Barrio area. Mm -hmm. Like the Joma Ling port is being built, mm -hmm. the SSIT is being built, uh, and some other port like um, CMIT or SGIT, there are a couple of four or five new ports mm -hmm. deep water are being built in order to meet the demand of, of cargo transportation. What about is the, the port services? What's the quality like? I indeed uh, experienced several problems on our uh, export business where we, we suffered um, from the poor services in the port even more than from congestion that is our experience. Well, you can probably improve the service um, through the port operators, but what about customs clearance? That's the uh, software of this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, so Customs is probably one area that's um, controlled by the government. So, mm -hmm. have you actually seen any improvement in customs clearance um, at the port areas in recent years? I think I've I've, I've deal a lot with them. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's in, your in my experience? daily operation, uh, I, I deal a lot with uh, custom clearance, and uh, of course, they have been trying very much to improve. Uh, um, however, um, there are still a lot of. Uh, problems mm. um, in clearing our cargo, mm. but we have to agree that they have been trying mm. and put a great effort in improving their service. Mm. You experience the same thing? Yeah, mm. I mean, I would I would add that uh, from the outside, uh, things have indeed improved. If you look mm. into the core of the custom service, there's obviously still the opportunity in a situation that maybe tariffs are not clearly stipulated, uh, that right. uh, there are some delays possible and all of that. So the behavior and the attitude from the custom yeah. uh, unfortunately has not uh, improved as much as the technology. Mm -hmm. And that's where I would hope um, that the government indeed is successful to address the, the problems from the core. And that indeed uh, would then also help to uh, um, uh, to reduce what we can call the facilitation cost of business. What about the air transport area? What's the capacity like at the moment? So if you look into the capacity, um, we see uh, um, upgrades on the major two airports, Hanoi and um, um, Ho Chi Minh City. But if you see then also the increase of uh, domestic transportation, tourism, mm -hmm. inbound and outbound, the, the deregulation of the sector, which sees many more operators and low-cost carrier and all of that, mm. we, we probably would need to uh, improve the infrastructure even even more. And uh, Tan Son Yat is limited to the area which is available. Long Tan should be started only 2015 in terms of construction. So I would expect, um, despite some increases, that we will have to live with a limited capacity and yeah. uh, um, that uh, is something which uh, probably will take another 10 years to, uh, to ease.
but at least we can see uh, there are some movement from the government mm. to prepare for the next uh, five to ten years mm. in terms of air transport. Yeah. Mm.